Luke chapter number 1. We're going to start reading at verse number 26. Luke chapter 1, verse number 26. Just remember, if you're finding your place, I did forget already, uh, there is a cleaning schedule in the back, so check that and see if your name's on it. Uh, and also, uh, there is an updated prayer list and event list out there in the uh, out there in the, in the vestibule area. Uh, just look for those. If you didn't get one, uh, be didn't look out for those. Luke chapter number 1 says this, verse number 26. It says, In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, to the house of David, and of the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in and came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, and the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast her mind of what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall, he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, the Lord, of, Lord God. And unto David, his, and to his throne shall be of his father, uh, David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just be with us, Lord. And I truly believe this is what you'd have us to say this morning. Just share a thought on your mother and just what we can learn from her and the example that she gave. And Lord, we're just thankful for all our mothers. We're thankful for the stepmothers, and we're thankful for those that maybe just take care of uh, a caregiver. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for who you are. And we just want to honor them this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Theodore Roosevelt once said that a praying mothers are America's greatest asset. And I truly believe that as well. Amazing to me that comes from a president as well. A mother's lap is the best place to which to launch a life, someone once said. Someone else once said, she's someone who will listen to your problems until you are bored with them. Ain't that what a mother is? She'll listen to you. She'll help you. Don't judge her. She's just there for you and just shows you love, shows you mercy and grace. I guess just like the Lord does. No one is poor who had a godly mother. Abraham Lincoln once said that, and that's the truth, isn't it? If I never had anything else at all, Jesus saved me and gave me a godly mother. That's, the, that's all it's about, isn't it? I, uh, Charles Wesley once said this, I learned more about God from my mother than all the theologians in England. That's the truth. You can come to the house of God Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, and we can hear preaching. But you learn so much more from the example of your mother and how she lives and how she guides. Charles Spurgeon said this, I cannot tell how much I owe to the prayers of my good mother. And I'll tell you, we forsake those prayers. And I truly believe there's still prayers being answered today that our mothers, even if they've passed on, still being answered. I want to look this morning for just a moment on Jesus' mother. Late, he laid this on my heart. I woke up and I was like, what am I going to preach and, uh, the other morning? I, and he laid this thought of his mother. And Mary was really a perfect example. But we don't worship Mary. I worship Jesus. But I'll tell you, she set a good example for all mothers and all of us to look, look to. And I want to look at her, and I'm going to look at her in three kind of areas this morning. I want to look at the birth of Jesus. I want to look at how she was a mother at birth. I want to look at her how all throughout life she was a mother. Because listen to this, there's some people that's not a mother throughout life. They're there for birth, but then they're not there their entire life. But then this is a mother all the way to death. Let's look at birth first here. And I see that in verse number 26. And it says this, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. All children that are born are sent from God. Now, I can see that an angel was sent, but it right reminds me that every child is a gift from God. 
every child. We live in a day and we live in a generation where uh, people want to look down at children or that there's a crowd that wants to look at children and think that before they're born they're not human beings. And, and I'll tell you this, if you get that mindset, you're not going to care about them when they're born. I'll tell you, we need to value life and value. And, and it's a gift from God. We read here that Gabriel in verse number 26 was sent from God. Every child is sent from God. Every life is sent from God. Every child is placed into this world, placed into that womb by God. There's a heartbeat and that baby is able to take a breath because of God. And I'll tell you, we're, we're speaking about Mary this morning, but it's all about God this morning. Because if it wasn't a God, there wouldn't be a Mary. There wouldn't be a Savior that come into this world. Because of God, this mother can be a mother. Ain't nobody could experience. I bet you mothers could say, there's nothing that compares to being a mother, because I'll tell you, there's nothing that compares to being a father. There's all kinds of things I hear now that I'm a father. Harper says the wildest thing. There's nothing compares to it. The love that you feel, it's a love that's outside yourself. There's nothing compares to it. But we couldn't feel that if it wasn't for God. Verse number 29 says, And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Listen to this. When there's a place that God shows up, and there's a place that this angel appears to her, that's funny to her. That's square to her because that's not, that's not familiar to the flesh. See, the flesh don't like that. The flesh don't like God showing up a lot of times. But that spirit on the inside wants God to show up, desires God. If we're meeting without God, my gosh, we're just in a meeting. We might as well go to the flea market and maybe at least get a deal. God ought to be here. God ought to show up and that flesh don't like that. And she was troubled. She was. We look down at her, but my gosh, if an angel just appeared, it'd trouble us. But the message that the angel had, my gosh, she'd really trouble us. But verse number 29 says, And when she saw him, she was troubled. Troubled means disturbed, agitated, and alarmed. That angel shows up, and she's disturbed. She's astonished. She's alarmed. She just don't know what to think, don't know what to do. And I guess we'd be that same way. And it says in verse number 28, there before that, the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee, and blessed art thee among the women. They see that they're highly favored. Mary was highly favored. I see it like this. Every mother is highly favored. You know, there's some mothers that just aren't able to have their own children and experience that love and experience that gift. And maybe, uh, maybe you can get through adoption and different things, but mothers are highly favored. Still to this day, when you see a mother, they've got favor and God's blessing and their touch on their life. Don't take for granted, mothers, how favored that you are. I mean, that's a blessing right there in itself. But you fathers and you husbands, don't, don't take that for granted that you had a mom and you've got a wife. My gosh, a mother that God sends to an angel, an angel to, the, to this mother, Mary. Now, that's highly favored right there. And Mary was highly favored. God sent that angel to her, that angel to speak to her. She's about to be given the Son of God to save the world. Can you imagine that? I don't know that highly favored really uh, fits the mold for that, but that's what she said, what, what they were. Now, I tell you, he's getting ready to carry on the sins of all of humanity, and they found favor. It says in verse number 28 there, blessed art thee, or blessed art thou among the women. You think about how blessed a mother is at birth. There's nothing that compares. Nothing in this world can bring that feeling as a child at birth. And guess what? Mary's about to experience in that. Not only that, but it's going to be Jesus. It's going to be the Savior of the world. She's blessed among all mothers. And I'll tell you, we're all blessed. I know we're here for the mothers, but when we just really start counting our blessings, my God, we ought to be just feeling it in our heart. She's so blessed. Why is she so blessed? Because she found favor with God. I'll tell you, we've all found favor. Out of all the women, all the women on the planet during this day, he chose Mary. Isn't that unusual? Of, of everybody. That's some favor right there. Do you know, you look back there at Harper. Out of all the men, out of all the women, God chose 
me and my wife to have Harper and to raise her and to grow her up. And I'll tell you, we need to think about the individual and think about just the, how the fact that God put that person in our heart, in our life, that's amazing to me. What a responsibility. What a, God lined everything up. In our life, the mother that you are, God chose you to be that mother for that child. He chose you to be that father for that child. What a blessing and what an honor that he chose you with that responsibility. No matter how difficult they may be sometimes, no matter how much they may might be like you sometimes, and it'll aggravate you, but I'll tell you, he chose you. That ought to do something to us. Verse number 31 says this, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, bring forth the son, and shall call his name Jesus. You see the plan here. She's going to conceive. Bring forth the Son and call him Jesus. And there's other specific details as what's going to take place, but I just want to see you. She's a mother at birth, a favored mother, a mother that God placed that seed in her. What a, what a blessing. And I'll tell you, we just, this morning, as we celebrate Mother's Day, we just need to reflect as men, but also as women, just what, a, what it means to be a mother and what a blessing that is that God found favor and we look at it and Mary found he found favor in her but he finds favor still to this day for those mothers and those ones that's got children but I see this she's also a mother throughout life we read again I'm going to read that verse again it says and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb that's where it started bring forth the son and call his name Jesus he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall, shall give unto him the throne of his father David. We read the details about that beginning. Mary wasn't just a mother at birth, but Mary was a mother all throughout his life. And, and we don't know all the details about Jesus' life, and we don't know everything that took place, but I'll tell you, it amazes me these people that maybe could have a child and just give it up. Or have a child and not take care of it. Or have a child and just drop it off and leave it. I'll tell you, she was a mother, and we're going to find out she's a mother all throughout life. See, we're fleshly, and we, we do make mistakes. People make the wrong decisions. But I'll tell you, we need to look at this example. It says in verse number 32, it says, He shall be great. Meaning Jesus is going to be great. So much of who we become and so much of who we are is because of our mother. I look to students at school, and I'll tell you this. I teach sixth grade math at Harris, and I've taught for long enough. And I, and I know, you know, anytime there's an issue, it goes back. Academic or behavior, nine times out of ten, you know what it goes back to? Their home life. Every time. See, kids are kids. They ain't got uh, problems at the workplace. and They ain't got financial issues per se. It's a home life, and it goes back to that. And I say so much of what a child is is because of who they are at home. I'll tell you, there's so many I'll talk to, and i say, hey, why are you acting up? What's going on? There's something going on at home, and the tears start shedding. You, you can tell, listen to this, you can tell who mother's not around. You can tell whose father's not around. You can tell who's raised by the grandparents. You can tell. That's full drop. You can tell who's got a mother and a father at home. I'm just saying, you can tell because there's a responsibility. And you can tell it all. It says she, uh, he shall be great in verse number 32, and Mary's going to have a part just like every mother does. In other words, all those kids at school that have these problems sometimes from time to time or these kids that's got it going on good, Mary's going to be the same way. She's going to have to do her part because it says he shall be great. She's holding an infant in her hands. She's holding that baby, and she's going to be here, and he will be great. Whew, that's a great responsibility for me, isn't it, you? You think of your child and you think about your children. See, God's got a plan for each and every one of us. And he truly believes that what if, what if one of these children in here are going to be the next Billy Graham or a next missionary or be somebody big for the Lord? 
He said he desires them to be great in verse number 32. And look who it was from. In verse number 27, if you go back, it was a virgin's name was Mary. She was a virgin. See, the mother had a role. That mother had a responsibility. God could have snapped his finger and put, put uh, Jesus on this earth, but he used Mary and he used the mother, but he used the seed of God. What in Joseph? Here's why he did that. He did that so the mother would have that responsibility, but God would be 100% man, but 100% um, um, God. Don't sound like he'd be 100-100, but he is. But here's the thing. That mother had such a role in his life. I don't think we realize that. If there's one thing that just stood, stood all over me during studying this, it's the role of a parent and the role of raising that child, the role of a grandparent. And still to this day, there's a plan, and you don't realize those, those teenagers. And, uh, you know, I think back to uh, the, even the boys and the youth and things. My gosh. God could use those boys in a mighty, mighty, and even girls in a mighty, mighty big way. But even as grandparents and parents and aunts and uncles, we've got to do our part to help mold them and help shape them and be the right example. It says in verse 33, He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Jesus here is God. He's come to this place, and why did he come? He came to seek and save that which is lost. That's the whole reason he came. That's the whole reason it was God taking off, coming into Mary so he would have that flesh and could be that sacrifice, be that perfect sacrifice that we would never, ever be. We've done failed in this morning. We really have. But you think about it. There's coming a day. If there's one... Let me just say this. If there's one thing that we ought to really put some stock in in this life, it's got to be our families. It's got to be, and I'm just preaching to everybody this morning, but we've got to put some stock in our family. But then it's got to be other people as well. But don't you think about this. There's coming a day where our finances won't matter. Our homes will not matter. Our toys won't matter. Our hobbies won't matter. The only thing that will matter, it'll come an end to our work. It'll be an end to these things on earth. It'll be an end to sin. And we'll get to heaven. And the one thing that'll be matter is how did you leave an impact on this life and this earth? How did you do that? Well, hopefully we had a godly mother. But hopefully we didn't turn our back on our family. We just helped mold and help. I wonder if Mary realized the impact she was going to have. I don't know. We sing that song, Mary, Did You Know? I don't know that she could truly comprehend it all. I mean, I was just thinking, if that was me, and they said, hey, you're getting ready to have birth to the uh, Savior of the world, I don't know how you could comprehend all of that. But I don't know if my mom ever prayed this or knew this. I just think Mary just prayed, and she just done the best she could do. Because I just think back to my own mom. I wonder, did she know that I was going to be a preacher? Did she know I was going to be a pastor? Did your mom or your dad know that you was going to end up the way you were? That's amazing to me that God's got a plan and God's got a purpose. And the whole thing we've got to do is just be godly to them all throughout life. All throughout life. And we find that, we find what was on that uh, bulletin that was handed out. Her price is far above rubies. You can't put a price, you can't put a price limit. Husbands were right, aren't we? You get a godly wife, you can't put a price limit to it. You get one that's not godly, you'll know what we're saying. Not that I've had it one, but I know what it might be like, I guess. Think of all the things that a mother does. The, the late nights when they're up sick. The times you take them to the doctor and they stay out of work. Harper don't want her daddy, she wants her mom. When they take them to the hospital, all those nights of praying, all those sleepless nights, all the raising that it goes in, involved in, all the love that a mother does from the moment of birth, preach this week on the blessings and how if we just get a hold of those blessings, that it would sink our boat. And I'll tell you this, we can't even count the blessings just from an infant. Think about that. As an infant, what all God done for us. When we wasn't able to count, wasn't able to think, those are still blessings. And you see that price is far above rubies. But I see this. 
Jesus continued to grow and grow and grow. And there's a kind of a gap in our Bible. We don't know what all took place. I'm sure he had to be corrected at times. I'm, I'm sure he never sinned anyway, but still it just shows me a, it shows me the love and the direction. I guess it's more what I should say, the direction and the guidance that that mother had that he grew. And how all throughout life from this birth and as a young child and then all the way up to adulthood, she helped make him who he was. And I'm we're preaching on mothers, but look, we've got grandparents here. We've got uncles and aunts and fathers. You've got to realize your impact all throughout life. See, if God sees, if a child sees God's important to you, he'll be important to them. If a child sees you value in church, and I'll tell you that goes to grandparents and everybody, we've got to value the Lord. But lastly, this morning, we see all the way to death that Mary was a mother. So many times the child, as you grow up and you get older, it's the child that ends up being the parent that has to take care of the mother or take care of the father. Some of you shaking your heads, you know what I'm talking about. I'd say, I don't know, seven out of ten or more times than five, more than half, it's the mother passes before the child. I mean, that's just what it is. And the child has to take care of the mother. And that's one of the hardest and the greatest responsibilities it's ever been is to be that mother. But here's the thing. We've got to share it back to them and give to them. Because a mother is a mother all the way to death. And sometimes they get in the condition where we have to take care of them. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and your mother has already passed on. I bet you could say this. She was still my mom all the way to the point she took her last breath. She's still my mom. I still loved her. I still took care of her. I did everything. I, we get to the point where we lose our mental capacities and we can't think right and we do foolish things. She's still a mother. She's still ours. We still love her. And that's what often happens. I mean, usually that's the way it happens so many times. There's different tragedies that may take place. But listen to this. Mary had to witness her son's death. That don't usually happen. But that's what happened. And in the same book, in Luke 23, Luke chapter number 23 and verse number 34, if you just want to listen, you can, you turn there, Luke 23, 34, it says this, And then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Mary, there is witness in her son's death, and he's beaten, and he's mocked, and he's ridiculed, and he's spit upon, and he's hanging on that cross, and what does he do? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do, what they do. They don't know. They don't understand. Matthew 27, 46 says this, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Even God turned his back because of the sin and he couldn't look upon his son and what he's going through. But who was still there? His mother. She was still there. Mary was there. See, Jesus had that payment. He had a down payment. Actually paid it all. A ransom for all for our sins. And he carried it. He carried it all along. But listen to this. Mary was there. The whole time, Mary was there. All the way to his death, Mary was there. And in Matthew 27, 55, it says, And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. Among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James. Can you imagine the pain? It wasn't just one hour on the cross, but six hours on that cross looking upon their son and looking upon just the human, uh, carrying on the sins of all of humanity. And there she is, being a mother, being a mom, knowing she held him in her arms, knowing that she raised him, knowing that she had a part of that plan, knowing that she had a part of the process to get him there to save the world. It's amazing. That is amazing to me. I've took that for granted my whole life, I believe. I just took, and you probably have too, we've took it to the fact that he was God and he come and he did it. But Mary had a part in it. Mary helped him. He chose Mary. He found favor in Mary. I don't worship Mary, but she had a part in it. Isn't that amazing? John 19, 25 says, And now, and now there stood by the cross Jesus, 
and his mother. She stood there, right there at the cross, and she stood there and she watched. But look what he says at the cross. He says, woman, behold thy son. I don't call my mom woman unless you want to be. But he doesn't have his beat. You know why he called her woman? Because the ground's level at the cross. And he looked at her. He looked upon her and saw her as a human being. Saw her as somebody with a soul. Saw her for the reason that he's just beaten and broken. I'm getting chills thinking about it. That he's hanging there and he just says, woman. And he died for every single one of us. His own mother called a woman. He's no respecter of a person. You're here this morning, you may be carrying something. He ain't no respecter. He loves you. He cares for you. And all the way into death, Mary was there. I find that Jesus even took care of his mother. He, he, he made sure she was taken care of because that was his mother. In John 19, 27, the next verse, he says, He said to his disciple, Behold thy mother. And that disciple, that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. John took her, and John took care of her, and John loved her, and that was Jesus. He knew his mother got into that pivotal moment, and God got in there, and love got in there, really. And he's hanging there on that cross, and he don't want to see his mom forsaken. But she's been a mother, and she's loved him for so long, and he's still got that love. And he takes her and says, hey, John, you take care of her. But here's the thing that amazes me. The last mention of Mary comes in the book of Acts. I believe Acts 13 and 14. We read about the disciples being up in that upper room. We hear about the disciples praying. But who's with them? Mary. You know what that shows me? That women and Mary ended up being a part of the local church. He had a plan for it. He had a purpose for it. And she, she joins in. Mary's with those disciples. And now she's serving. And he wants us to serve. He wants us to do. And how important is it for women to be a part of the church? Women to do their part, but men equally. Working and doing. His death became her life. His death became my life. And I'll tell you, what a, what a thought this morning. It just motivates me to do every single thing I possibly can for him. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to... I pulled in the parking lot and saw them sticks just out of the parking lot. I was excited to death to see just something done for the Lord. I ain't nothing too big, too little. I ain't nothing. We hop to the, if it's picking up stuff off a carpet, just walk. My gosh, there might be something after all these leaves to pick up. But whatever it is, I tell you, I love the Lord. And when I do those things, I ain't doing it in shame. I'm not doing it to be saved. I'm doing it because I am saved. Because he's been so you get out there the leaf blower, you get out there digging, my gosh, he gave you the ability to do it. He gave us a mother. A mother that was at birth, a mother throughout life, and a mother all the way to death. Tammy will come to the piano. She's going to play something softly. That's the message this morning.